Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 40 of Learn Lightroom 5. And in this episode I thought it would be a good time to step back and I'll answer some questions I get all the time and offer some tips along the way. Now most of the stuff I'm going to be talking about I at least mentioned in previous episodes but there was so much information given in 39 previous episodes and if you didn't see it all and you don't have a photographic memory you might have missed some of this uh, these tidbits here and there so I'm gonna cover it now before we get started though if you guys could do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel I would really appreciate that visit my website anthonymorganti.com too I'd appreciate that okay first of all I want to stress that Lightroom is what they call non destructive and what that means is when you process your images you're not actually writing to the file now it doesn't matter if you shoot raw if you have what kind of raw file you have or if you shoot JPEG whenever you do any processing in Lightroom it never touches the original file and the advantage of that is is well a lot of advantages the one advantage is that you'll never um, like corrupt that file. A lot of times in computers they'll be writing to a file and a glitch happens and you know power outage something happens and the file gets corrupted and you've lost that image forever if it gets corrupted. Well if Lightroom only reads from the file and never writes to it then you'll never have that problem. The other advantage is the processing is non-destructive in that you could go back and change things you didn't what you did isn't written in stone so you could um, really make a mistake and it's real easy to undo let me show you when you're in the develop module over here in the left panel is this little tab called history and if you open it up you could see this picture I hear uh, here that I took every step of the way of my processing is recorded now let's just for the sake of it open up the brush and I'm going to turn the exposure all the way down and let's just say I just drew this big ugly line right here and I says oh I don't like that line now what do you do well you could go over here to the right panel at the bottom and reset but it's gonna reset it all the way back to the beginning well what you could do instead of that is just go over to the history panel or the history tab in the left hand panel and just click back one spot and look it's magically gone now if I didn't like the upright perspective any of these things I could just keep clicking back and keep going back into my history and then I could now process the image from this point forward so that's a real advantage um, you know with Lightroom is if you messed up you didn't like what you did or you just it allows you to experiment too you could go well I'm gonna try this and see what happens well if it doesn't work out just go over to the history panel and just click before you started doing that work and everything will revert back to where it was so that's um, you know the the really uh, the biggest advantage that I see in Lightroom is that you're never modifying the original file you're um, in some cases you're writing all this information to the Lightroom library in other cases you're writing it to a separate sidecar file file that's a dot XMP file now how you have Lightroom set up is determines which one you're doing I have mine being written to the separate sidecar file I like that better because someday if I decide not to use Lightroom anymore I'll lose all my edits because all the edits are in the library well if you write it to the separate file uh, all the edits are in that separate file so if I go on and use some new you know program someday that I doubt but someday that's better than Lightroom then um, hopefully that program could read that separate XMP file and where that's controlled in in Mac it's Lightroom catalog settings and you go over here to where it says um, metadata and I have this box checked automatically write changes into XMP so that means it's creating the separate sidecar file now if you're using Windows I think I'm not hundred percent sure but I think this catalog settings is under file so not under you know Lightroom it's under file so you could double check that but I go through your menus and you'll find it and that's why I prefer the separate sidecar file I'm thinking someday if Lightroom you know is no more or I go on to some other uh, app or whatever 
that app could read these uh, separate XMP files and we'll be good to go. Okay, that's the history and that's what I get at questions a lot. People saying that how do they undo something, you know, and that's how you undo it. The other question I get a lot is um, when you're opening a tool, let's say this spot removal tool, and you see these little overlays I have here, see how they appear? Um, a lot of people say they don't see them. Well, what that is, is there's a setting where you could turn those off. And the easiest way, by far the easiest way, is this bar right here. It's just called the tool, um, the tool bar, they call it. And if you don't see it here, as you can see, it says tool overlay always, visualize spots. If you don't see this, hit the T key on your keyboard. Do you see how it disappeared? I'll hit the T key again, and there it is. So this is the, the tool bar. And you could see that I have, right now I have tool overlay always. So I suspect if you're not seeing it, you have tool overlay never. And you could see I can't see my tool overlay anymore. So I'm going to put it, I typically have it on auto. And what auto is, is pretty much if I hover over the picture, it shows them. And if I pull my cursor away from the picture, they go away. Usually, you see that one's lingering. But um, what that, I like that because then I like to see the image without the um, overlays getting in my vision, you know, in the way of my vision so I could see it. So I could go like that. Also, a lot of people will email me and they said that they can't see how to visualize spots. That this little checkbox right here, when you could uh, get this kind of negative look to it, and it will help you visualize spots better. Um, well, that's because you don't have you don't have this bar showing. So again, hit the T key on your keyboard, and you'll get this bar. Now, T key is in all these tools up here. So in the uh, uh, cropping tool tool overlay always. If you don't see the, your your tool overlay, then just go hit the T key, make sure you're uh, showing here. And I like to always show the tool overlay when I'm using the cropping tool. I like it auto. This is my personal preferences. I like it auto when I'm using the spot removal tool. I never use the red eye tool. I have it set to always, but that's that. Uh, graduated filter, I have it set to always. You can see I used a graduated filter. There's the tool right there. Um, the um, radial filter I have it set to always and the brush I have it set to auto again on that one I will hover over and I didn't use a brush on this particular picture but if I did when I hover over it will show where I brushed and uh, that's the toolbar so remember that T for toolbar okay the other uh, thing I get a question this is actually what I get the most questions on people will say help I got blue on my picture and I got red or red or you know and or I have this blue and I can't get rid of it and I covered that I in the um, histogram uh, episode I think that might have been episode 39 and that's these little triangles over here on the right panel when you're in the develop module these little triangles here and see how they're kind of look active that's because if you click on them it'll turn them on and off so these are the highlights. If I hover over it, it shows anywhere that is absolute white with no detail in it. So I hover over it and you can see this corner is red. So that turns red. I could click on it and it will stay there forever until I click on it again. Uh, similarly, you go over to the shadows and if I hover over it, anything that's absolute black will come out. And obviously this is a silhouette of a statue at Gettysburg. and I have, you know, it's a, it's a silhouette, so there's absolute black in there. If I click on it, it stays there forever. Now, you click on it, it goes off. Also, if you just want to check real quick to see if you have any clipping, this is what this is called, shadow clipping and highlight clipping. Just hit the J key on your keyboard, and you see I automatically turned it on, and I could see the clipping. And I hit the J key again, and it goes off. So, uh, that is a question I get a lot. I mean a lot. People email me and say, I got this blue, I got this red, whatever, and they don't know, you know, what they did. Well, they probably inadvertently hit the J key, or they accidentally clipped, clicked on one of these uh, little triangles here. So just keep that in mind. The other thing is, um, if you want to see this picture without all this uh, rest of Lightroom around, just to give you an idea what it looks like, help you visualize what you want to, where you want to go next with your processing, you could hit the F key 
for full screen and that will get rid of everything else and you can just see the image all by itself and get an idea if you want to do any more processing to it. Hit the F key again and then it will go back to the the um, you know the uh, Lightroom layout. Also you could um, if you want to get rid of the panels, if the panels are in your way, you don't want them, you could hit shift tab and it just gets rid of all the panels. Hit shift tab again and they'll all come back. Uh, that's just something. Also this information over here, I cover this all the time in the previous episodes, but if you missed it or you don't remember it, if you just hit the I key on your keyboard, it'll toggle through from no information to the information about the size of the image and the date and time you took it and then it will also go the metadata that you use to shoot it 1 2000th of a second f11 ISO 100 230 millimeters okay so that gives you know an idea of what you shot how you shot it hit I again it'll go away so you can just toggle through these settings by hitting the I key um, the other thing is a lot of keyboards don't have a backslash key and you could look up there also you know it depends on um, now I bring this up I should say is if I hit backslash key now though the backslash key on a, a US keyboard is below the delete key above the enter key and if I hit the backslash key it'll go and show me the image before I did any processing at all to it I hit the uh, backslash key again and it reverts to where it uh, where we are with the processing um, if you don't have a backslash key, you could look up, I know there's some alt codes that uh, somebody emailed me and said that they have a French keyboard, I think they told me, and they use an alt code to, to do the backslash key. I apologize, I should have wrote down, the guy was nice enough to email me, and I should have wrote it down what that alt code was, but I didn't. So you could look up and see if there's an alt code, and that an alt code is on a Windows keyboard, you would hold down the alt, alt button the ALT button and you would with the keypad you usually doesn't work with the keys numbers going across the top of the the keyboard it would be on the keypad you would just punch in like a, a code like um, you know 62 or something like that 62 and hold while holding the alt key in and that is um, the same effect as holding in that backslash key so that would get you that. The alternative, if you don't want to go through all that trouble, is just hit the Y key. And this is almost as good. It shows you the before on the left and your processed image on the right by hitting the Y key. So keep those in mind. That really works. Um, the other questions, or another question I often get, um, they notice when I work over here on either of my panels, like if I open the basic panel, it's open. Now when I open the detail panel, my basic panel closed and the detail panel open. I'll hit effects and you can see I only have one panel ever open at one time. And typically when you uh, get uh, Lightroom out of the box, you could open these and they'll all be open and then you have to scroll down to find where you want. It gets confusing. I like it this way. And the way that setting is right here. You just right click anywhere, you know, on that panel and go down here to solo mode. You see how I have that checked? I'm going to uncheck it. And you can see now that it's unchecked. I could open all these, these uh, tabs. And I don't like that. I don't like having to scroll all around to look for what I want. I like solo mode. So that's why I use that. So uh, that's solo mode. It also works over here on this panel. As you can see, I'll open up snapshot. I have no snapshots, presets, navigator. Well, it doesn't work with navigator, I don't think. But it works with all the others. Now I'll open history. And you can see how snapshots closed. Or a presets closed, I'm sorry. Let's see, I'll show you again. Presets. And we'll go to history. And you can see that closed. And again, you right click on that, solo mode. So just that's all you got to do uh, to get solo mode out of those. Um, the other thing is, I've covered this too, is to, I've done the settings on this image. I want to save time and I want to do the settings on this image and on this image. All right. Um, I want to do the exact same settings. And look at this. I had a humongous, I'm sorry to sidetrack. Look at that spot. That was on the sensor of my camera that was disgusting it took me forever to clean that that was like goo or something on there but anyways um, the point of my story here is I want to copy all these settings to these two pictures and save a lot of time 
Well, it's real easy. Just select the picture first or click on the picture that you that is fully developed that you want to copy the developing to. So in this case it's this one. That one's clicked. Hold the shift key down and click on the last key in the sequence or last I'm sorry. Hold the shift key down and pitch on click. Let me start this over. First click on the image that is fully processed and you want to copy all that settings to the other pictures. After you do that, hold the shift key down and click on the last image in the sequence. Now you see they're all selected. Now you're in the develop module and all you go down here to the right panel at the very bottom, sync. Just click on sync. This box will pop up and ask you what settings do you want to sync. In this case I'm going to sync everything. So I have them all checked. I click synchronize and it just takes a second and it copies all those settings that I did that are in the history panel of this one excluding the brush stroke because I in before that you see that so wherever I'm highlighted before we didn't want that ugly brush stroke copied over remember so I'm gonna now look at this one and it takes a while there and the settings are bad it's a little crooked um, actually I think that might have been a slight hill but um, beside that uh, now I do have to do some things obviously I have this ugly 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 um, sensor spot here that I have to get rid of and I might want to straighten it too but I could do that now it saves me a lot of time I go over to this one which is a little wider view and you could see then too that those settings were all copied over and it saved me all that time and um, you know go from the before picture to the after picture and that saved me a lot of time so that's uh, how you sync all your settings. So that's what I wanted to do with this uh, episode. That's all I wanted to do was just cover some things where I get a lot of emails where people ask me these questions over and over. And I thought I'd try to uh, cover as many as I could in this, e in, this, um, in this video. That way when I do get these emails, I could refer people to watch this video and that will save me a lot of time typing it all out. And um, I th um, thank you, everyone. I just want to thank everyone for your kind support and for uh, watching all my videos and visiting my website. Um, it's, I'm really, really grateful. And I just cannot, words cannot express how um, grateful I am for all your kind support. Again, though, if you guys have any questions, anything I didn't cover here, feel free to email me. Uh, email is Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com. And you can call me Tony. Are you okay? And uh, that's it. That's all I really have to say for this episode, and I'll talk to you guys soon.